The reading is taken from Psalm 65 and can be found on page 580. Praise await you, O God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. O you who hear prayer, to you all men will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness, O God our Saviour, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the furthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. Those living far away fear your wonders, where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges, you soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow, the hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with corn. They shout for joy and sing. Amen. What a day! Yeah, you know, I am absolutely wild. Why don't you say we just veg out tonight? Uh, maybe get a takeaway? Where's that, uh, where's that carry out Chinese menu? Oh no! What? I've just remembered. We've got people over tonight. What? For dinner? No, for breakfast. Uh -huh. Well, why don't you go and check the fridge since you forgot? No, I want you to check the fridge. Can we check the fridge? Yes. I'm so tired. Oh. On you go. Oh, okay, uh, let's see. Well, how's it looking over there? First of all, it's price <laughs> Nothing? Nothing. What do you mean? I mean, we've got nothing in the fridge. Oh, well, well, there's a bit of milk here, but it's been sitting out, so I wouldn't be... Do, do we not have some eggs? Uh, yeah. I've got three eggs, uh, I've got a bit of cheese, uh, and a pack of bacon. Is there any lasagna left over from last night in there? Sonia? Yeah, it's still here. And there's a sausage here wrapped in cling film. Unless it's looks like bionic finger or something like that. But, Any veg at all? Uh well, there's there's a sort of wonky courgette. And there's some sleepy broccoli and a bit of soporific spinach. There has to be some sauce in there. No. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. There's some chai uh, Thai easy for me to say. Thai chili sauce, some brown sauce. Um, bread sauce, mayonnaise, that sort of stuff. And there's a pot of yogurt. Oh, what flavour? Rhubarb. Well, that hardly counts, does it? <sighs> okay, we're nearly out of cheese, right? And the cream's out of date. I see what you mean. There's nothing. Uh, how old is that salmon? Uh, it's about a week. <laughs> a week? Well, we better chuck it then. Uh, still, there should be kind of half a packet of biscuits in the tin. We can't offer biscuits for dinner. Well, who's coming anyway? Family. <sighs> family? Yeah, family. Uh, we had your mum and dad here last week. No, it's Moyle and Toil and the kids. They're coming. That's a new one to me. Where did they come from? Cambodia. 
I thought all your relatives came from Cambrai Street. I said they were family, not relatives. Their pond's nearly empty and the fish are all down. Well then, let's take them to the aquarium. The fish aren't decoration. It's all they have to eat. Well, we're not exactly overloaded with supplies. Unless you want to open a tin of soup or beans or... Or we'll, we're going to have to go to the supermarket. Well, what do you got there? Well, it's a ten minute drive and I've just got comfy. Take away. Did you find the leaflet? No. Look, we're going to have to cancel. Phone them and say something's come up. But, but they're expecting dinner. We'll invite them another time. I'm not phoning them. It's embarrassing. Well, then send the text. Well, what are we going to eat then? Um, don't know. Last night's lasagna? You send a message and I'll bung it in the microwave. We'll do a big shot tomorrow, eh? Yeah, okay. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's get it delivered. It's only five pounds extra. Fancy a biscuit while we wait? Have you ever heard that phrase before? There's nothing in the fridge. And that's what Malcolm said. There's nothing in the fridge. But actually, there's a whole lot in the fridge. In Psalm 65, the psalm that Gloria read to us a little earlier on, there were three things coming out of that that I want you to notice about the world that God has made for us. And the first thing is this, that God has provided bountifully. He really has, Psalm 65, verse 10. In other words, God has provided more than we could ever need. You drench the furrows, you soften the ground with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and our carts overflow with abundance. So God has provided bountifully. That's what the psalmist says. God is kind. He is so kind. He has made a world that is rich in resources, in all sorts of good things, a vast abundance of crops and fruit and vegetables. Think of all the wonderful things that God has provided for us in the supermarkets. Think of all the things we ate for breakfast this morning. Think of all the different things that are in our fridges. God has provided bountifully. You crown the year with your bounty. The problem is, though, that we take all this for granted sinfully. Look at this picture. That's a picture of food that has been dumped. Food from the supermarkets, food from our kitchens, food from our fridges, that has been thrown out, thrown out in the scrap heap. And Psalm 65 verse 3 tells us, when we were overwhelmed by sin, you forgive our transgressions. But I wonder, is it possible for us to reap a sinful harvest? Sometimes by our greed, by our overproduction, farmers are exploited in other parts of the world, and poor people go hungry while we have far, far too much in our shops. God has provided far more than we could either want or need. But so often we take God's provision for granted. And while we eat too much, throw away far too much, waste too much, we fail to think about the poor people like Fawn and Maul and Tall and their four children in countries such as Cambodia. So God has provided bountifully, but we have taken this for granted sinfully. And that means we have to say sorry. We have to repent of our greed and ask God to help us to be thoughtful and to be generous. And then there's the third and the last thing from the psalm. And it says this, hope is to be found in God, our Savior. O oh God, our Savior, you are the hope of the whole earth. Do you remember that 18-year-old Fawn was hopeful? She told us she was full of hope. 
hopeful in God, hopeful in Jesus. Maul and Tall and their four children, they were hopeful, hopeful that God would see them through their time of starvation, hopeful that Jesus the Saviour would grant everlasting hope, hopeful because Jesus has loved us and given himself on the cross. It's a very wonderful thing that today as we celebrate Harvest Thanksgiving, that we can also pray for and support families in poor countries such as Cambodia through organisations such as Tear Fund. And after church today, the Boys Brigade will be putting on a bread and a, a cheese lunch to which everybody is warmly invited. So instead of going for roast beef and all the other things we usually have for Sunday lunch, we can have a simple lunch together. And what we ordinarily might spend on our Sunday dinner, we can give to Tear Fund so that together we are able to support families such as Maul and Tall. Then tonight, Tear, um, Tim McGowan, who is the director of Tear Fund here in Northern Ireland, he will be with us and we'll be able to give him a cheque in order to bring hope to Fawn and Maul and Tall and their children in other parts of the world where otherwise there would be no hope. So as people who have been saved by the Lord Jesus, who want to be people of hope, hope in the community in which we live and community in which Maul and Tall live, we remember that hope is to be found in God, our Saviour. We're going to pray now and uh, we're going to be joined by Callum and Tim and Laura. And they're going to lead us now in our prayers. They'll be picking up on some of the uh, things that we've been uh, thinking about in our story. Uh, and so let's unite our hearts and bow our heads in our prayers. As people who have been saved by Jesus, we want to be people who bring hope to our community in which we live and to the community in which Moy and Toy live. Hope is to be found in our God, our Saviour. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you that you have provided bountiful for this world. Give us far more than we can ever use. Thank you for the wonderful fruit and veg and natural resources and provisions that we, have, we enjoy every day. Help us please not to take these goodnesses for granted. Dear God, we say sorry for the sinful way we use far more than we need. We all use so much oil, gas and petrol, put too much harmful poisons into the atmosphere and waste so much food. We say sorry for our sins and ask that you would help us to live more responsibly and to be generous to people either around us or in other parts of the world who are in need. Amen. Lord, we bless you for the hope that Jesus brings. Thank you for the hope which the church offers to a needy world, for the way in which Christian people can support one another in different parts of the world, and the hope which our Tear Fund lunch will give Maul and Tall and their children today. May we be bringers of hope to all in need. In Jesus' name, amen.